Okay, welcome back to our teaching, The Faith of Christ. We're kind of winding down um, this teaching. I have a few more scriptures to go through. Um, I'd just like to say uh, I had a wonderful time speaking with my brother uh, and dear, dear friend, Mark Hawkes. And, um, and uh, Mark shared an uh, interesting point with me as he's been studying uh, the faith of Christ with us. And um, he's uh, brought up some interesting points uh, and uh, gave me a little bit of uh, information. And that is he went out of curiosity knowing that this demonic twist of scripture that says we're saved by our faith instead of Christ, in other words, through our works, okay? Um, he, he knows that the roots of that is through Catholicism. So Mark went back and he looked at uh, uh, certain scriptures that we've been studying through the Latin Vulgate. And what's interesting, which of course the Catholic Bible is based on, what's interesting is the Latin Vulgate usually has it right. And Mark brought, brought this to me and I, I said, you're kidding. So we shared screens and he brought up the Latin Vulgate he has on his computer and he showed it to me and it's true. It has faith of Christ. You're saved through the faith of Christ, not faith in Christ. Isn't that amazing? Yet they teach you're saved by the faith uh, in Christ. So it works. Isn't that amazing? Yet in the Latin, they have it correct. So thank you, Brother Mark, for bringing that. I appreciate it so much. And the rest of us now can appreciate your looking that up. Okay, let's turn next to Romans chapter 3. And uh, beginning in verse 21... And I'm going to read for a few verses here. So this is just uh, certain verses I want to use uh, to uh, round out uh, this teaching. It says, verse 21, reading from the modern King James Version, which I'm liking more and more as I, as I use it. It says, But now a righteousness of God has been revealed apart from the law, being witnessed by, by the law and the prophets. Huh, a righteousness of God has been revealed, separate from the law. Now, the, the, you know, Jews were always taught that righteousness is the law. Righteousness means rightness. Rightness. Okay? So only the law taught us rightness. But what Paul's saying here is a rightness of God has been revealed apart from the law. Oh, that's a mind blower to the Jews. That is unheard of. That's almost blasphemy. Then it says being witnessed by the law and the prophets. What does that mean? It means that the law and the prophets spoke of this righteousness that is to come. The prophets prophesied of it to come. The law is the witness of it that, that that one that would come would fulfill the law. The prophet spoke of how he would fulfill the law and what would happen to him. Isn't that amazing? And in fulfilling the law, he himself has become righteousness itself. So righteousness is no longer in the law. It was the teacher to bring the true righteousness which was revealed to Christ. Verse 22 even the righteousness of God through the faith of Jesus Christ toward all and upon all those who believe. For there is no difference. In other words, no difference between Jew and Gentile. So that righteousness of God is through the faith of Jesus Christ. It's not through our faith. The righteousness is through the faith of Jesus Christ. Don't you know we still have to have the faith of Jesus in our lives all the time, not just to become born again, but in every instance of life. You're going to make a stand against the enemy? Whose faith makes the stand? Whose faith causes the enemy to flee? It's the faith of Jesus in you. What is our job? It says toward all and upon all those 
who believe. We are supposed to believe in Jesus' righteousness, which is through his faith. That's our job. Our job is to believe in his faith. (laughs) I know I've said that a lot, but it takes uh, several times to really get the idea. Our job is to believe in his faith. So if the Lord, hear what I'm saying, this is a secret. This is a secret of prayer. If the Lord directs you into a thing, then go boldly because the faith of Christ will make it so. You can believe. What am I saying? When Peter, again, I keep saying this, but it's a good illustration. Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and then, and then he suddenly, he believed. He believed in Jesus' faith, which was making him stand on the water. And Peter knew it was Jesus' faith that caused him to stand on the water. So Peter said, Lord, is it you? you know, are we seeing you know, an apparition? And, and Jesus said, no, it's me. And Peter said, then bid me to come out. Because he wanted to be with Jesus. Suddenly, Peter's faith was in the faith of Jesus. But he dared not step out on the water because he doesn't have perfect faith. Jesus did. See, he's, he, he wasn't even born again yet. But even if you're born again, we only have a, the down payment of our inheritance. We do not step out on the water on our own initiative. We step out as the Spirit tells us to step out only. So don't go attacking demons. Don't go uh, uh, claiming somebody's healed when they're not. But if the Spirit tells you yes, and it is the Spirit of, of Christ, then you can step out on the water. Then you can say, thus saith the Lord. Then you step out boldly because our faith needs to be solidly in the faith of Christ. So many Christians are taught that that they have to make things happen by their faith. And I've heard this over and over and over again, and it's not true. Your faith is still fallen. My faith is still fallen. I only have the down payment of my inheritance, which is the Spirit of God uh, within me. It's caused my spirit to become born again, but in my soul, I still fight the flesh. Like Paul says, the war of the two natures. And so is your faith complete? Is your faith perfected? No, absolutely not. So how, do we, how can we claim to have the mind and wisdom of God? We have to wait until we hear and see the spirit telling us when to do something and when to speak And when to step out. And if we do that, then we can be assured we will be anointed. We can be assured that the thing will happen. If the Spirit says, uh, uh, do it. Here you are. You're walking on the water. William Branham didn't do a thing until he had a vision of it. And instantly, he'd have a vision. Boom. Then he'd know. And he'd he'd take somebody's hand. They'd come up and he'd take somebody's hand. And then he would pray. And instantly... That hand, he'd see a vision. Their hand would turn diseased. And then he'd know it was a natural thing. Or there was two signs uh, that would happen. If it didn't, but it turned a different way, then he knew it was a demon spirit within them. And so then he'd come against the demon, boom, instantly gone. Or he'd come against the disease, boom, instantly healed. Sometimes the tumors disappeared instantly, gone. And then they'd have to, the body would have weeks to recover, but they were healed that moment. So what was happening? Branham was relying on the faith of Jesus. And he said, I can't do it, Lord, but you can. If I see you, show me or tell me. Then I'm stepping out because I know it's yea and amen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Praise God. We are not righteous because of good works. We're righteous because of Christ within us. And his faith has has made us alive. His faith within us has caused us to be born again in our spirits. And one day, soon, to be born again in our souls, and our flesh will follow. 
and we will have a, uh, a new born-again body. Praise God, we're all looking forward to that. And then we'll be as the angels, Jesus said. Praise God. Let me go on. Verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the uh, redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness through the passing by of the sins that had taken place before in the forbearance of God. I'm going to read on for a few more verses. For the display of his righteousness at this time, for him to be just and forgiving the one being of the faith of Jesus. Are you of the faith of Jesus? I am, and I know you are. I want to be of the faith of Jesus. I don't want to to name it and claim it. That's a lie. That's a demonic lie. Here's the truth. Put your faith in the faith of Jesus. And then don't move until he tells you. That's the key. Don't you understand? Jesus didn't move unless he saw or heard the Father tell him to move. He didn't speak unless he heard it first from his Father. Isn't that amazing? And that's exactly how we're supposed to be, and that's how we're supposed to be taught. But the church has taught people to name it and claim it. It's, it's a demonic lie. There's, I have no power in my faith except to have my faith in Christ's faith. All power, all authority is in the name of Jesus. It's not in the name of Jim. All power and authority is in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Let me just read on for a few more verses. Verse 27, then where is the boasting? It is excluded. Through what law? Of works? No, but through the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the works of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only and not also of the nations? Yes, of the nations also. So Gentiles, you're included. Since it is one God who will justify circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith, do we then make the law void through faith? Let it not be, but we establish the law. In other words, true righteousness is through the faith of Christ. So Christians who are taught and are trying to live um, through their own righteousness are still yet in their sins. You can be Mother Teresa and still go uh, to, to hell, to punishments. Why? If you don't know Jesus and you reject Jesus because of a lie that it's all through your works and you work your whole life uh, to be righteous through works alone, you're still wearing your filthy rags. You're still bound for hell. Your stay may be short, but you're still bound for hell. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that sad? Because the church is taught to be righteous through your works. No. Your righteousness is through your faith in the faith of Christ. And no no other way. And works should follow naturally. Because as we have more and more faith in Christ, in order to keep that door open, in order to close the door to the devil, we have to put aside, put behind us the works of the flesh, put behind us sin, put behind us the things that separate us from Christ. If you want your faith in Christ, you can't have a wall put up between you and Jesus. And if you, if you have a sin in your life that puts up a wall, then you're stopped in your, in your climb up the mountain of God. You're stopped in your progress. And then, once you're stopped, you begin going backwards as the beast tries to pull you back into the swamp of sin and degradation. We can't have sin between us and God. We can't allow it. Now, we all still do to a degree, But the more we live righteous, the more we try to live righteous, the less there is between us and Christ. The clearer we can hear. 
the better we can see. Isn't that amazing? The more the walls are torn down. And the easier it is to go up the mountain of God. Amen. Lord bless you till we come back again.